is able to put two chapters of the Bible in five minutes. Oh my goodness, amazing. Can you hear me? Is this on? Okay, all right. I don't know about you. Uh, as we were worshiping, as we are praising God, and as Hannah prayed, I felt God's presence here. He is here. He's in our midst. Actually, I took my shoes off when I was worshiping down there. I put it on just so I can come up here. I sense his presence here. God is saying something amazing in our midst. Um, today, what I want to share with you is something that I've been praying about probably the last six to eight months. And uh, what I, I've been asking God, what I should share today, this weekend, I had to preach to the pastors in our denomination yesterday. And, and I've been asking God, and same message that, same text that God has given me to sp- speak to our pastors, I'm going to share with our church today. It is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, 13, 14, God, that God has put in my heart. And let me pray before we continue on. Father, we come. We love you, O oh God. We didn't come this day, gather this day, either in person or at home. We didn't gather just to hear, to do some uh, 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 Sunday ritual or gathering. We come to meet with you. We, come, we gather together to see your face, God, to worship you to give you glory, to become. Meet us here, God. Oh, let our worship honor you and give you glory, God. That you will do what you said you would do. There you say you will meet with us. There you say you will speak to us. So come, Lord. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Speak in our midst and talk to us, God. And stretch out your hand and touch us. We love you. Have it your way here. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. If my people, I found the um, Google, um, from the Google search, I found the pic, the title of my message today. If my people, chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Let me just read. It's a very short verse. I know many people know this verse. And I know many people pray it as well, often quoting it wrong way as well. But let's look at the Word of God together. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, verse 14, and... My people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The the phrase that really stuck to me was heal the land. Probably this is true with most of you. Last eight to nine months has been probably the tougher season that I went through. I'm going through with all of us. Especially as a pastor, this has been part of one of the most difficult seasons that I'm, I'm going through. I have never felt more inadequate, never more uncertain the things you have to decide on, Helpless, weary and tired, fearful and anxious. I don't know how many times I thought, I don't know if I can continue on as a pastor anymore. Maybe it's time for it to retire or something. It has been a difficult season. Coronavirus, I mean, almost killed, killed all of us. Changed everything in our lives. So many of us, we still live in fear. Our actions are so condition. We live in the back of our mind. The fear it drives our actions. Anxious, anxieties. Families are stretched. As uh, Hannah prayed, families are stretched. Parents have to not only to have to work at home, but also help kids to do online studying and everything else. 
Thank God all my kids are grown up. Only a grandkids who, are, who don't live with me. Anyway, okay. So many changes had to come. We, had, we came face to face with how weak, frail we are. We saw the mortality of human life. It was difficult since with the coronavirus. Some of our loved ones lost their loved ones. And we couldn't even gather to encourage. We had our loved ones in, in 20s passing away. And we couldn't and go, go to show our heart and share our hearts. It was a very, very difficult season. Not only that, everything we do at church changed. Online service. This has not been easy. You know, you know, there, were, there were those in the early days of online service when Pastor Mimi and I, we had to record our sermons at home. I hated it. It killed me. My family didn't like me at those days. And I, to, oh, you know, I, I, I was so frozen in the, in the camera, in front of the phone, I just looked so robotic. And it was, I hated those things. And when to open the church, when to close the church, to put the mask on, and all those things were so difficult. I had to do crash learning about Zoom, Google Meet, everything else. And I still don't know what the heck is going on. Okay? I do not know. But some good things happened. Some things amazing happened. I think in that, time, in that season, our life groups have been meeting more regularly, more faithfully, connecting one another. Many of us are actually doing community in creative ways. We reminded in those seasons to put our trust in God and God alone. Walk by faith and walk in trusting in God. Then the racial tensions and crisis really ran, ran into our face. And we were reminded with all the things going on, especially with uh, Minneapolis and whatnot, we were face to face with sinfulness of our hearts. We had to come to terms who we are as a nation. Our history of, our, of sin, the residual effects and the result of sin we had to face with. Had to come to terms with our complacency in, fe in the face of racism. We had to search our soul, open our eyes to the heart of our God. I personally was very, very difficult for me because I realized I have not understood many things for a long time. Lived in a little bubble. It was difficult to come to terms with my sinfulness, sinful heart. We humbled ourselves before God. We were called to be hope. How to pray for all the people, all the peoples, all the nations. It was difficult, still difficult. And and the, and the news, the stories of riots and all those things didn't help. Confuse and make things difficult in so many ways. Yet we resolve to seek God's heart and his face. Acknowledge and repent of our sins. To be faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. To love one another as Christ has loved us. And not only that, now we are dealing with this political division in our nation. Everybody's saying, if you do not elect this person, our nation will go to haywire. And if you do not elect this person, we'll, we're going to go bankrupt, whatever, my, all the things. And, and there are so much things out there. People are angry and upset and frustrated. I feel like I'm walking on the edge. I don't know who I can talk to. I, don't, I need to be careful what I say. I, don't, I, I, didn't, I shouldn't mention anybody's name. At all. And you see, policies matter. Politics. Okay, let me be. Let me, let me do it again. Policies matter. Issues matter. But our hope has never been in a person or political party. Our hope has always been in God. Somehow we are so worried about things we have forgotten. When you say gospel, it's not only Jesus Christ came and died on to forgive us our sins. When you say gospel, you're saying Christ came and as a king, he is the king and the Lord. Not only ourselves, he is the king. He is a true king. His kingdom is coming when all the man's kingdom will be no more. Amen? 
So we are in the place, in the place, we are, not only our personal needs, we see our nation in crisis. You know, something about crisis, right? Pressures, reveals what is in our heart. I thought, you, you can call it test, temptation, the trials, all these things reveal what is in us. It reveals what is important to us. It reveals what our values are. And the crisis and pressures reveal what is in our hearts, our fears, our passions, and our visions. It reveals what we trust in. It also reveals our brokenness, our fractures, our sins, both hidden and uh, visible, more highlighted. In, a, in my prayers, God reminded me, one day God took me to Genesis 22, when God told Abraham, this is not in my notes, but let me say it anyway. Uh, in Genesis 22, when God told Abraham, when he, he told Abraham to sacrifice his son, the verse begins by saying, after, now it came about after these things, that God tested Abraham. Then God tells Abraham, I want, Abraham, I want you to take your son and sacrifice him as an offering. It began with the phrase, God was testing Abraham. Abraham didn't know he was being tested. At the end of the whole story, you know, God desire wasn't that Isaac to be sacrificed. No, there was not. Okay, at the end, God says, stop, stop. Now I know that you fear God. God was revealing what is in his heart. You see, test, tries and things, reveals what is in our heart. Do I trust God? Do I love God more than anything else? You see, crisis, difficult season, reveals what is in our heart. It does. One of the well-known hymns, beloved hymns, you may, I don't know if you know the same, but it says, one of the lines, it says, Have we trials, temptations? Is there troubles anywhere? Another verse in the hymn says, Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with Lord of care? You know what the song is, right? Heavy trials and temptations. Now you know, the, you know, now you know the song. Okay. And actually, in response, he says, we should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. Right? And then he says, precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. This is what people of God do. When he see, when he face trials, temptations, when he see difficulties come, we are burdened with burden, we are, we are under the heavy load of issues. We have friend, we have Lord God, we can come, we take it to the Lord in prayer. You see, in the verse we looked at, it says, if there is, if God says, I, if I say, there is no rain, in, there is no rain, and there is, and if there is pestilence that comes, and all those things, God says, if my people, when see, I'm not saying, I need to be, let me, I need, let me stop, I need to make a little disclaimer, I'm not saying the COVID-19 came as a God's judgment, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we somehow we sin, therefore this is a direct punishment, I'm not saying this is a punishment of God. We are not the people of God. So when, when this verse is given, God promise is given, God has given the message to the Israelites. We are not Israelites. But the principle in this, God's word is true to us. We can apply in, in a, a measured way, right way. I'm not saying that we are going to defeat difficulty because we have sinned. I do not know. But in those times, God says, if my people... He didn't say, if the, if the world, he said, if my people who are called by my name. God is saying, in this difficult season we are in, not only our personality, but you see our nation in a difficult place, the place we are living in a difficult situation, if my people, if God's people, he says, humble themselves and pray. And pray. 
and seek my face. Turn from the wicked ways. You know, in this season, you know, you know, you know what, what I've seen? God was driving us, driving me to, on my knees to pray. In that last six to, six to nine months, I think I have pr- probably prayed more than ever. And I went on my knees, and, 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 I, and I have been on my knees praying Second uh, Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. I don't know how many days I wept before God and prayed before God this. And God has driven us to pray, did it? driven us and leading us to pray on our knees. Isn't that what this verse says? If my people who are called by my name, as a child of God, as a people of God, called by his name, one who trusts in him, in times such as we are in, we are driven to our knees. We should, that should lead us to pray. Ask God, humble ourselves, acknowledge our weakness, our brokenness, acknowledge our need of him. God, I need you. God, I need you. Do not live like those who does not know God, who have no hope who have no one to turn to. We have one who we are supposed to turn to. We look to the Almighty God. Acknowledge we cannot do it ourselves. Isn't that what you are learning in this season? We cannot do it on our own. All the technology will not. With COVID-19, we still are helpless. And we do not know. Humbly ask God for his wisdom and his power, his grace and mercy. One of the things that happened in this season was that our elder session, we used to meet once a month to have business meeting, sometimes long, three, four, five, six hours. Now in this last this season, our elders and pastors came together weekly to pray. Every week came to pray. We will come and spend time praying, just waiting upon God to hear God, to wait upon God together. We pray to hear God, to God together and encourage one another to ask God for his people, hope, his family. And we have never gotten this close to one another as before. You know, you know, you know when we are locked down, when the lockdown is, one of the first things we did before, even, before we even began our in-person service, first thing we did was we had time to pray. We opened our mornings to pray. We had, you know, not a lot of us, some of us will come, you know, Every morning at you know, 6 o'clock to 7, we'll pray, you know, and we will be 10 feet apart from each other. We'll pray. We've been praying. And I tell you, that has been my lifesaver. Yes, I do my other prayer times, but that time when I gather with some of my, uh, some of my brothers and sisters to pray for the people of God was so helpful. You know, and then it, drew, it has driv- also driven us to humble ourselves before God. Humble ourselves. Especially in the issues of racial justice, we acknowledge our needs. We repent of our sins. We confess to one another. We hurt each other. We wept together. We have, we have, you know, we, as you know, we have begun our courageous conversations. We had three of them. Behind that, a number of people gathered weekly to say, how do we... Do this right. How do we love each other right? How do we help our church to see what is not right and, and to live right? We have been doing this thing. What we are doing was humbling ourselves, hearing each other, hearing where we have fallen, what we have not done right, learning about the history of the sin and, and wickedness in our nation and saying this is not right and acknowledging that. To begin, you know, and to be vulnerable. And share our stories. We resolve to do love as we ought. This is what it means to pray. Pray, to pray, we humble ourselves. We acknowledge before God our weakness, our need of God. We humble ourselves. We say, God, we have not not done right. That's what praying is about. We were once again reminded that we are called to be house of prayer for all the peoples, all the nations. And we were driven to seek the face of God. The face, this is important. 
to see more than the blessing, more than the strategies, more than the solutions. But what, and we were asking, what is in God's heart? What did he call us to be and do? We were pushed to ask, what does it mean to be people of God? What does it mean to be church? You know, some of you know, all our leaders, our deacons and elders and pastors, we gather weekly, we meeting weekly for the last four or five weeks. We come asking questions, not just doing a book study, we are asking questions. How do we live authentic as a people of God? What does it mean to be a church? What does it mean to be a family of God? We, was, we are seeking the face of God. Not just answers, not just the powers, we are asking God, how do we see your face? What are you saying to us? In this, when things are going, things are rocking in this world, we see God's face with God's help. Do we see church, God's family as sacred, not just an optional, optional thing? Are we devoted to one another, to, to things which he commanded us to be uh, devoted to more than the normal, convenient traditions? Some of you know in the group, you know what you're talking about here. Jesus told us, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I've loved you, that you also love one another. I'm sorry. I don't have the person there anyway. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Do we love one another as we were supposed to love one another? Can anyone see it? See, we are seeking God's face. Share hearts, share wounds, weep together, laugh together. And there is stirring in our hearts as we seek God's face. We can dream again. And in the midst of seeking God's face, we begin to see God stirring our hearts to see what we could be before God, what a church could be, what God has called us to be. What if we tremble at God's word? If we obey, indeed obey God's word. You know what God says. And then here, in this short verse, is a promise of God. He said, then God said, then I will hear. He said, then I will hear. When God's people will humble themselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from the wicked ways, God said, I, then I will, then I will. And he says, hear from heaven. God will hear our prayers from heaven. That God will hear our prayers, I will hear our cries. And in, you know, the, the, the number of past promises God has given, Jeremiah 33, 3. Not, good number to remember, right? 3, 3, 3. Very good, you know, somebody said, you know, uh, the emergency number, hotline to God is 3, 3, 3. Okay? He said, call to me, and I will answer you. I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Didn't God say, call to me, I will answer you. God said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray. God said, I will hear from heaven. And, said, and then there's, I will forgive their sins. There's so much sins that God, we need God to forgive us of. We have done wrong. We, have, we need to be made right before God. What, what did God say in his word? He said, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and unrighteous, unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord and he will have compassion on him to our, and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Forgive us our sins. Right? Pardon. Forgive us our sins. Then God said, I will heal the land. That's what we were asking. God, heal our land. We have, done right, we have not done right. Our land, our land is broken. We are not just praying about our own personal needs. We are asking God, come, heal this nation. Restore this nation. We have not done right. We have sinned before you. Heal this nation. Some, I, I, I wrote some notes. I, I forgot to mention that. Okay. Give me one second. 
You know, and there's so many. I just didn't, I forgot to mention about this, this verse. Let me go back. Okay. It says, turn from the wicked ways. Let me just stop here. In this difficult season we are in, as you come before God, as you seek God's face, we see glaring sin in our lives as well as our nation. You saw injustice in our hearts, racism and, and evil in our hearts. We saw that. We need, we need to turn and repent before God. There are sins, one of the grave sins our nation has been involved in for decades. We have mil, over nearly millions of abortions going on in our nation. And we have states that, you know, that enacted a law that will allow even the, uh, uh, the, the, the termination of baby even born as a part of abortion. We have all kind of sins we call wicked. We have, we, have, we have sins of brokenness, of human trafficking, sex trafficking in our nation. So much brokenness we see in our nation, we need to turn our faces to from. And we need to turn our faces to our God. Turn from the wicked ways. Turn from the wicked ways. Then God will say he will heal from heaven, forgive us our sins, and heal the land. I know this message is really heavy, isn't it? Yet it is not. For me, I see God's promise here. He says, God, he says, I will hear your prayers. I will forgive your sins. I will heal the land. There is a, a, a passage that, that in the book that some of us are studying. I love this passage that, you know, I want to, you know, I, I think I put it on my Facebook a number of times more than once. If prayer isn't vital to your church, then your church isn't vital. We are called to be people who call upon God. If you are not, if you do not take the word prayer seriously enough, we are not coming to God in prayer. If our prayer is not vital, the things we do will be not vital. If you can't accomplish your church's mission without daily passionate prayer, then your mission is insufficient. Your church is irrelevant. We as people of God, we come, we seek God, we turn to God, we follow God. What he calls us to be is supernatural things. Without his help, we cannot get there. There's no way. We come. God says, if my people, are you his people? I'm his people. I mean, there's bad language here, bad grammar. I am his people. I'm a child of God. I'm a person of God. God, you know, and God was so amazed. This Saturday we will be, I'll, we will be studying in Building Place, chapter 6 of Daniel, where Daniel, this man of God, prayed. And, and if you go to chapter 9 of Daniel, you see Daniel praying for his nation. God hears his prayer, and his nation is restored. God bring God answers his prayers. When God's people come and praise, God answers our prayers. Amen. We believe that. Now, uh, let me end with this thing. Early church devoted themselves to pray. Chapter four, book of Acts. The apostles Peter and John was put, took taken back into Sanhedrin, and they were jailed. They were threatened, and and they were even. Uh, ripped and all kind of thing, they will let go. First thing they do is come back to church. They come to pray together. And after they, after in the midst of their prayer, this is what they, what they prayed. And they pray. And now, O oh Lord, take note of their threats. Grant that your bond servants may preach. Speak your word with all confidence. While you, God, extend your hand to heal. And signs and wonders take place. Through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. They prayed. After being persecuted, they're being threatened. They come and pray. They said, God, make us more bold. Give us your power and stretch out your hand to heal the sick. Do signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Look what happens in the, in, when they prayed. And when they have prayed, listen carefully. When they have prayed, the place where they have gathered together was shaken. 
There were shaking things happened because when God's people came and prayed, the place shook by the God's presence. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. God, when people of God came, they prayed, and the praise of pray, they were praying, praying together, shook with God's presence. God filled them with power to go out and preach the word of God and be boldness as signs and wonders be released in the generation. You know what time this is? It is the good time, perfect time to pray. It's time to pray. Not only for ourselves, God is calling us as a people of God, as a whole church, to pray, not only for ourselves, but pray for our nation. We are broken. We need God's hand to come in. God said, I will kill the land. God said, I will forgive their sin. God said, I will heal from heaven. This is a promise. This is what we are called to be. People cry out before God. And God will answer our prayer. Look at the verse. Uh, I found, I, 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 I thought it was so cool that pick. I just wanted to show you that. I'm gonna, I put it on my Facebook too. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. We will heal, forgive their sin. And heal their land. Let me end with one of the old songs that I loved. This may be dating myself like over 30 years ago. And I remember when I first heard this, uh, this song, I wept. And just words were just so amazing. I want you to hear this. And I don't know how many of you know this song. Some of you, if you pray with me in the mornings, you know this. We confess the sins of the nation, and Lord, we are guilty of a, a prayerless life. That phrase, we're guilty of prayerless life, when I first heard it, literally I felt like a knife going through my chest. We've turned away our hearts from your laws. We have taken granted your unchanging grace. Turn away this curse from our country. We say that we have robbed you. And our storehouse the bear. Open wide the floodgates of heaven. Rebuke the devourers so that we may not be destroyed. You said if we humble ourselves and begin to pray that you would heal our barren land and cleanse us from your, cleanse us with your rain. I love the chorus. Don't pass us by. Let this be a generation, Lord, that lifts up your name to all the world. Save us, O God. Save a people for yourself, O Lord. Let the fear of the Lord be their standard. Save us, O God. Cleanse us from our unfaithfulness. Let the place where we live be called a house. Realize this is a song for our church. I've been singing 30 years ago. Let us let where we live be called the house of prayer. I didn't know we would be called house of prayer. God save us. For our, we are called to pray for our nation, and He will heal the nation. Out of praise and come. We we'll sing a praise together. I want you to hear what the Spirit of God is inviting us. He's in, call inviting us to be in the place where God said, I want to answer you. I want to heal your land. I want to forgive your sin. Come to me. He's inviting us to come, draw near, to stand in the gap for this nation.
that God will heal this nation, restore this nation. The heavens, and as we look to you, may you shout your glory. Come before you today. Lord, you said when there is a pestilence in the land, when there is no rain in the land, Father, when there is catastrophes and oh God, and heaviness in the land, Lord, you said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God, then you said, then I will heal from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal the land. God, we come today. God, we pray, heal this land. Forgive us our sins. We have sinned before you, God. We have not loved our neighbors well. We have oppressed one another. We have, we have not walked in justice. We have not done right, God. We have sinned before you. Forgive us, oh God. Restore this nation. We come and say, God, that we need you to come. Will you render heaven and come and transform this nation? Transform our hearts, God. Make us more like you. We ask today that you will come. Lord, and heal this land. Starting from me, my heart being made right, my family being restored, my community being made right, God. Oh, we ask today, come. We are your people. Forgive us our sins. We seek your face, God. We turn to you. So come, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for loving us. Father, thank you that you are God who hears our prayers. We worship you, God. Father, we ask this nation will be known as a nation that trust, put their trust in you. We love you, God. We honor you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated for a second. Let's all stand and receive the blessing and benediction. Before, uh, before we uh, end with the prayer, uh, I just want to let you know those who are worshiping with us online, uh, join us if you need some time of prayer, ministry, and any need you have, please join us in the uh, uh, prayer room uh, where Pastor Mimi and other leaders will be there with you and pray for with you and encourage you. So, and, and please join in to... I believe it's a Zoom, Zoom meeting uh, and join in. And also want to let you know that if you need any prayers, as you, one of the things, as we are in person, if you need prayers, if you sense God's moving in your heart, tugging at your heart, it's time for you to pray. And I invite you to stay where you are, take some time to pray. If you want some prayers, you may come in the front and we will pray with you as well. So let's come. Father, we love you, we honor you, we are your people. We are yours. Lord, you say, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, Lord, you said, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So come, Lord God. Move us and store us and use us for your glory. We seek your face. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God the Father, communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit of God be upon each and every one, the people of God, who are gathered here in worship. Be upon all who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus. 
be upon those who stand in the gap for the nation in prayer. And from now until forever and ever more. Amen, amen, amen.